presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox We are Ohio. Phoenix, it's an earlier start time on this Saturday. Back in Cincinnati, it is an 8-10 beginning. The Reds, who have played very well since the All-Star break, try to snap a two-game losing streak here tonight in the middle game of this series against the Arizona Diamondbacks. And hi, everyone. Along with Chris Welsh and Jim Day, I'm Jim Kelts, and welcome once again to Reds baseball. Well, the Reds, who lost last night here 4-3 and 11, try to get even in this series tonight. And Chris, they will do it with the services of their shortstop, Zach Kozart, again, back in the lineup. Well, it's nice to see Zach Kozart back out there in a pinch hitting role last night. He laced the double down the left field line. He hit it very solidly, and you expect him to do that. One thing, though, you get back when you get Zach Kozart is the captain of the infield. That's where the shortstop always comes to the top. He's in charge of placing the defenders and so on. So when he's out there, you know that the Reds defense is at its best, even though in his absence, Jose Peralta did a nice job. Kozart still a very important cog in this ball club. Well, Kozart missed eight games in part because of that right knee, but also because of a sore left Achilles. Now to the pitching matchup for tonight's game for the Reds. Seven game winner Anthony DiScalfani goes for number eight after a seven inning outing but a four run seven inning outing his last time out against the Dodgers. It's kind of amazing how you set the standards a little bit higher every time this young man takes the baseball because you figure well if he goes six and oh he can go seven and oh right and then he can go ten and oh. Well it's not always that easy. You see the last five starts for DiScalfani still pretty good numbers earned run wise but the Reds are not getting in very many runs with which to work so maybe they will be able to do that tonight if they can get to the Diamondback starter uh, Zach Godley he's a right hander as well in fact it's interesting because both these guys were in the SEC at the same time Godley a, a year or two younger than Di Scafani he's making his ninth start overall four and two record coming off a really bad outing his last time out against the Atlanta Braves but still a decent fastball a lot of cutters a good change up and if he keeps the ball down like last night's starter did he may be a very tough challenge for this Reds offense. All right, Reds will see Godley for the second time. He did not pitch well against the Reds in Cincinnati, but he did get the win. We'll step aside. When we come back, Jim Day talked about staying till the end. Both these clubs capable of late inning comebacks.
is brought to you by Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Say close to CincinnatiUSA.com. By Bank of America, life's better when you're connected. And by Skyline Chili, feeling good, it's Skyline time. Chase Field here in the desert, roof closed, pleasant night, indoors here in Arizona. You know what, you don't want to uh, go to sleep on these two teams because they have the knack for coming back, which the Reds did and the Diamondbacks did. Check out our Elk and Elk storylines. Most wins and final at-bats this season in the National League. The Giants have been the ultimate comeback kids, but look at Arizona and Cincinnati, both with 13 wins in their final at-bat this season, including last night for the D-backs. In fact, they've done it three times this week. Let's take it back to Monday. Braves tie it at eight in the top of the ninth, and then Paul Goldschmidt walked off home run, nine to eight. D-backs win on Wednesday. The Braves tied it up with four runs in the ninth. It went to the 11th when Brandon Drury delivered a walk-off sacrifice fly. D-backs win 10 to nine. And then last night, Reds tie it up at two in the ninth, only to see in the 11th, a wild pitch from Blake Wood and the D-backs, their third walk-off victory this week. The Reds would like to Erase that with a victory tonight. Even up this three-game set at a game apiece. We'll see if they can do it together. Around the corner, lineups. And first pitch, Jim Kelce and Chris Wells standing by with all the play-by-play -play action of Reds baseball here on Fox Sports Ohio. Prior to the off day and the end of the homestand by a run 6 5 against Texas lost here in 11 4 3 last night. Take a look at the starting lineup that Brian Price offers up tonight Hamilton Cozart and Votto those are back in there after missing eight games Duval Phillips and Shebler Suarez Cabrera and Dee Sclafani against the 26 year old right hander Zach Godley. Well, he's a young man that was originally drafted by the Cubs, signed by the Cubs out of the 2013 draft, uh, two, uh, tenth round draft pick. They picked him out of the University of Tennessee, making start number nine. He's also worked in the bullpen here for the Diamondbacks this year. Hamilton shoots it off the glove of the shortstop Owings and out into left field to get this game started, offering at the first pitch thrown by the Bamberg, South Carolina native. 
Zach Godley and he's on to get this game started. Yeah, Billy Hamilton picked up a hit last night but it was in the ninth inning. Early in the ball game, the opposing pitcher Braden Shipley was able to retire him. So when you get him on to start the ball game, it changes things entirely now for everybody in that Diamondback defense. I'll keep an eye on Billy Hamilton now. 53 stolen bases this year, tops in the big leagues. He's gone five straight games without a stolen base. He gets a big lead over there against Godley. Ball bounces away and quickly down to second base goes Hamilton. The ball. Bounce to the left of the shortstop, other the uh, catcher Tuffy go, go switch, and Billy now in scoring position. Well, I don't know what happened right there. That should be a pass ball because Go switch looks like he had that thing surrounded and just hit off the heel of his glove. Could have been that he was waiting for a slider and his pitcher Godley threw him a fastball. And really what happens with Godley he's got three pitches that he throws one's a fastball and it'll run inside to right handers one a cutter that'll run away from right handers and he's got a very good change up he'll also throw a curveball but not nearly as much as those other two pitches. Well you're right on that Chris they initially called that a wild pitch and just now changed it to a pass ball on Gosowicz. So an opportunity in his first start back now for Zach Kozart who had the pinch hit double last night. Give the Reds the early lead in this game. You know, it's kind of interesting and it could be anecdotal but this is an area where Zach Kozart kind of struggles because he likes to get up there and attack the baseball. It doesn't take a lot of walks and he doesn't intentionally hit the ball to right field very well. So when he's needed to move Billy Hamilton over he's had you know weaker at bats than he does when he doesn't need to run, hit a runner over. Those are now eight games due to the soreness in that surgically repaired right knee and then the left Achilles tendon giving him some problems. Could have played could have started last night did get in as we mentioned as a pinch hitter last started on the 17th against Miami. So it's been 10 days since he's been in the red starting lineup at the shortstop spot a spot that was filled by Jose Peraza for most of that time and uh, even though it's good to see Cozart back Peraza kind of showed us something out there at short particularly with the with the uh, the bat in his hand. Well I, all I've heard from uh, a lot of people is that how he cannot play shortstop now maybe in the long run that's the case I don't know but he uh, temporarily over the uh, the games that he played in places Zach Cozart did a nice job. Zach at 265 with 15 home runs driven in 46. Hamilton draws the attention out there of Gene Segura the second baseman. Reds took the early lead in the game here last night scored a run in the second trying to do that tonight in the first. You know part of the problem that Cozart has in situations like this is he's very quick on an inside fastball but he's trying to hit the ball to right field so normally he pulls that pitch he can get the barrel on it very well. So maybe instead of trying to move the runner over he ought to just go up there and just let it rip and let Billy get the third base by by his own virtues if it doesn't work by Cozart. Swings at a pitch in the dirt Cozart strikes out. That is out number one. Take a look at Arizona defensively behind the right hander Godley brought to you by your four dealers. They'll line up with the veteran Michael Bourne out in left AJ Pollock in center Yasmani Tomas in right the infield back in there tonight Jake Lamb at third Owings at short Segura at second and Goldschmidt at first. Tuffy goes to which does the catching for the right hander Godley and there's Michael Bourne out in left field he did not start last night but did get in the game replacing Ricky Weeks late for defensive purposes. You know this is not the kind of defense that the Diamondbacks prefer to play with Joey Votto up but they have to do it because they've got Billy Hamilton on second base. Last night they loaded up the right side of the infield. They had another player right here all night long every time Votto came to the plate. But you can't do that when you've got a runner a second. Yes you have to keep that third baseman close to the bag there too. That's the shortstop Owings who is cheating over behind the bag. 
And in this instance as Chris is talking about he's staying on the third base side of second. This gives Joey Votto hitting lanes that he's not used to having. Joey comes in at 310 with 20 home runs. 74 runs batted in. On base four times last night. Rips it down the right field line into the corner. Fair ball. Home run. Joey Votto. His 21st of the year. And the Reds jump in front 2 nothing. Boy did that sound good or what. Man oh man a 2 0 change up Joey Votto. You know it just looked like the body posture that he had at the plate. That he was just so confident that he was going to hit that ball somewhere and hit it really hard. And this baby just comes right into the wheelhouse down and in. Votto doesn't hit a whole lot of him down the left field line but he was up there to go yard that time. Two out count. Votto jumped all over. 76 runs batted in now for Joey Votto and maybe he's confident against Godley because that now gives him six hits 13 at bats with two home runs lifetime against that Godley. All right so why does Godley even pitch to him right there you got a base open you got a right handed pitch a hitter coming up next. You're a guy that keeps the ball down. You know you get a you know his main pitch is a sinking fastball. So why wouldn't you just have the put another runner on first. You got a double play possibility. Sometimes teams either over overthink it or they underthink it. Duval bats now with two in, one out, base is empty. He hits one hard toward left field, but playable for Michael Bourne for the second out of the inning. That's in the Red Saw Godley back in Cincinnati. He was the winning pitcher. In the final game of the series on Sunday July the 24th 9 8 Arizona although he did not pitch well in that game giving up five runs in five and two thirds. He allowed 10 hits in that game. Red scored two against him in the first in that game and they've gotten two so far in the first in this game against this right hander. So Phillips bats with two out. Brandon starts today at 282 with eight home runs. He's driven in 50. He had a hit last night. He was one for four. Rips this one sharply into left field on a base hit. So three hits by the Reds in this inning. All hit well. And a runner on with two out. Not only hits by the Reds, but look how they look at the plate. They, they, they see it. They see the ball very well coming off of Godley. I mean, Brandon is just waiting right in there. He took the first pitch and he said, All right, I think I got you sized up. Godley's going to have to live on the corners and the knees tonight. You kind of wonder if you're Arizona what they're thinking is with Zach Godley in terms of keeping him in the rotation or putting him back in the bullpen. His minor league time he had more relief appearances than starts his big league time he has 14 starts 10 relief appearances that'll send Phillips down to second base on a wild pitch. Well remember though that when he was drafted by the Cubs he was a starting pitcher for the University of Tennessee and the Cubs immediately put him in the bullpen that ball never even made it to home plate. So maybe the Diamondbacks see something different than the Cubs did as far as using him in the minor leagues. He started out last season in a ball. Then in July got promoted to double A and then next thing you know he gets called up to the big leagues. He went five and one with a 319 ERA with the D backs last year. They went from a ball to double A to the big leagues this year double A to triple A. To the big leagues. He's been up and down three different times between Reno and Phoenix. Two and one now to Scott Shebler. 
He had a multi hit game last night. One of three picked up by the Reds. He was two for five with a run batted in. Remember he laid down that beautiful bunt single against the shift in the 10th inning last night. Hammers this one into the right field corner. That is going to be a fair ball. And that's another two run homer here in the first for the Reds. For Shebler, number five. A little bit further than the ball that Votto hit. They count the same. And it is four nothing Reds here in the first. Now the Reds are seeing it big and they're hitting it hard. Ball looks like a cutter that just kind of hung right there on the inner part of the plate and Scott Shevler getting out the whipping stick. Both those balls hugged the right field line. Both stayed fair right on top of those down there. Carlos Torres the first base umpire. And Zach Godley. Has been knocked around here in the first. Votto hit number 21. Shepler number five. Matter now is a Eugenio Suarez. Well, a nice little early gift for Anthony D. Sclafani gunning for his eighth win of the year before he goes to the mound. He'll at least have a four nothing lead. Sliced into right center. That ball is going to get down in front of Pollock for a base hit. So five hits now in the first inning for the Reds against Godley. And here comes trip number 401. That's Chip Hale, the manager. And he sent Mike Butcher, the pitching coach, out there. To Butcher's been a pitching pitching coach a couple of different places, including Tampa Bay, before he was named pitching coach here in Arizona. I'm not sure what you tell a young man like Zach Godley right now, other than tell your infielders to play deep. That's interesting. He comes off talking about Godley, a terrible outing his last time out against Atlanta, seven runs in five, but he comes off a very good outing. In fact, his best start of the year at the big league level, two starts to go against the Mets when they allowed only two runs in seven and a third. Well, right now he's throwing a lot of pitches in the center of the plate. And if you're not overpowering, you've got to live on the corners, inside or outside, and he's just not there. Better now is Ramon Cabrera making a second straight start. Speaking of Cabrera and talking about catching, the Reds made a move today. The right hand of Tucker Barnhart is still sore. Brian Price made the point in his pregame media meeting to say that uh, in a pinch, Barnhart could play today, but he'd rather keep him out a few more days so that the healing can continue. So, in order to have a backup catcher back to the mound, the Reds have made a roster move. We'll tell you more about that as this game continues. Reds get a pair of two run homers in the first, number 21 by Votto. Number five by Scott Shebler as Anthony D. Slavani takes the mound. Reds up four another.
run homers one by Votto one by Scott Shebler give the advantage to the right hander Anthony D. Sclafani as he takes the mound. Chip Hale meanwhile will put this lineup out for tonight's game. He has Gene Segura leading off then Michael Bourne and A.J. Pollock in his second game back from injury. Goldsmith Lamb and Tomas the middle three. Chris Owings Tuffy Ghostwitch and Zach Godley make up the rest of the Arizona lineup against the 26 year old Anthony D. Sclafani. Well D. Sclafani right now on the mound waiting for Gene Segura to finally get himself out of the dugout. You can say what you want about a double play being a pitcher's best friend. How about a four spot in the first inning. Start number 15, seven and two record, having a really good year after being delayed, obviously on the DL. The only thing that gives Di Scafani the slight bit of problems is left-handed hitting. Left-handers have hit him much better than right-handers, but there really aren't much in the way of left-handers in this Arizona Diamondback lineup tonight. Seven and two record, 3.27 ERA. Start number 15 for Anthony Di Scafani. He gets Gene Segura who is taking all the way and takes ball one. Last time out for Di Sclafani a seven inning four run outing in a four nothing loss at home to the Dodgers. Segura hitting 316 at the start of the day. Sixth best in the league, a dozen home runs, 50 runs batted in, hitless in the game last night, 0 for 5. And now he falls behind, does Gis Flani. Three balls and one strike. Michael Bourne on deck, then A.J. Pollock. Ball four, and he missed badly on a number of those pitches, so a leadoff walk. The battle will be Michael Bourne. Bourne did not start, as you mentioned last night. Did get in to the game about midway through. He's 33 years old. Great left-handed hitter, and he takes strike one. Hitting 260 with three home runs, Michael Bourne. Jammed on that pitch, floats it out to left, and right there to make the catch is Adam Duval. Take a look at the Reds. Defensive setup brought to you by your four dealers. They line up tonight with Duval on left, Hamilton in center, Shebler in right, Suarez, Cozart, Phillips and Votto on the infield. Cabrera, this is the first time that he has caught Anthony D. Sclafani. All of the 14 starts at Di Sclafani has been made this year. Barnhart has been behind the plate. Speaking of catching, we were talking about it before the top of the first ended. The Reds made a move today. Calling up from the AAA club at Louisville, the catcher Rafi Lopez. He's 28 years old. Minimal big league time a couple of years ago with the Cubs. Collegiate player at Florida State. Basically was the backup catcher at Louisville this year they call him up because they'd like to be able to get Barnhart healed completely or at least as close to completely as you can get at this time of year before they put him back in there. Well you don't want to be stuck with a uh, at a position player say Tyler Holt being your emergency backup catcher uh, in, a, in a regular season game. That'll do it. Double play ball Cozart Phillips. Votto stretch got him inning over well six four three ends the bottom of the first for the Arizona Diamondbacks although the Diamondbacks are taking a look at it with their video man in the clubhouse to see if indeed Phillips throw which didn't have a whole lot on it was able to get the runner Pollock down the line good stretch by Votto at that end he did about everything he could. Uh, they may let him stay at first base. Are they? No, or they're are not. They not. They're not going to challenge that. So it does indeed 
end up being a 6-4-3 inning ending double play. Make sure you follow Reds Baseball Live with the MLB.com at Bad App. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stats cast, news, and more. Simply download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Pete Sclafani, the beneficiary of first a four run first and then a double play that ended the bottom half, leads things off here in right. inning number two. There's four hits this year and a run batted in. Disco cutting her loose like he wants to join the home run party. Those batting gloves on. Ready to dig in here against Zach Godley. Cracks one out to center, but Pollock is there and he made a little bit of a basket catch on that sinking liner. I think he was unsure as to how hard that ball was really hit right at him hit pretty sharply by Di Scalfani but. Remember for Pollock yesterday was really opening day for him. Missed the entire season after breaking his elbow. On one of the final spring training games and he's finally got activated yesterday and back in the lineup. In fact in the game story in the paper. As Hamilton will bounce out to the first base from Goldsmith Pollock said as much. My opening day said I had butterflies just like I would on April the 5th or whatever opening day was this year. Two quick outs. The batter now will be Zach Kozar. He may have some butterflies today. He only missed eight games, but he was out with that strain of the left Achilles and soreness in the surgically repaired right knee. Back in there in his familiar number two spot in the Reds lineup. Lozada strikeout victim his first time. Godley trying to bounce back here in the second with a one two three inning after giving up the four spot five hits in inning number one. Rolls it over the mound and up the middle and a base hit for Kozar. The Reds get their sixth hit. Runner on with two out. I want to go, Z. 
by Cozart lapping down there because he knows he didn't hit it all that well. But you know, you oftentimes are good if you can hit it back to the worst fielder on the field. And that is undeniably the pitcher. Jeez. Down the left field line it goes by Votto. Cozart hugs third base as he comes around and then dives back in there. Votto is two for two in this game. A home run, a double. Second hit of the inning for Votto. Second hit of the inning for the Reds. Second hit of the game for Votto. Second and third with two out. Boy, Votto's spray chart's going to look kind of special, isn't it? I mean, he went right down the right field line for a home run that time. He kind of serves it right down the left field line. He's not sure if it's going to stay fair or not, but when it does, just inside the line, he ends up on second base. Cozart on third, so the Reds looking for a little two out action. 25th double for Votto this year. Reds now have seven hits in the game. Five of them have come with two men out. Here's Duval, hit it hard, but out in the left field his first time. That's in the Reds have lost two one run games back to back the finale against the Rangers and then the game here last night. Still the Reds 22 and 16 since the All Star break. Trying to put back to back plus 500 months together as Duval is hit right in the rib cage area on the left side. And after the first two are retired by Godley, a single, a double, and now a hit batsman, the Reds have them loaded and a chance to really bust this one open. Well, it was a changeup right here, so there's no malintent meant, but that doesn't take the sting away from Duval. Duval joins Vado, who's out at second, and Cozart is over at third on the bases. Here now is Brandon Phillips. Single his first time. He's two for six with the bases loaded this year. Movement and now action already down in the Diamondbacks bullpen. Vicente Campos, right hander, now up and throwing. It looked like it was going to be an easy inning for Godley. A line out to center by the pitcher, ground out quickly by Hamilton to first. Two balls and a strike now to Brandon Phillips. He really has had a very good month of August and a good stretch since the All Star break for Brandon Phillips. 368 in the month of August, 339 since the break. Into shallow right. Segura out long run. Cannot get it. Cozart scores. Votto scores. Over to third base goes Duval. Brandon Phillips comes up with a little gift hit out into right field, making it a 6 0 game. Reds, RBIs 51 and 52 for the Reds second baseman. Well, when it rains, it pours. Just about everything that could go the Reds' favor in this game has gone in the Reds' favor so far. I mean, a pitcher's pitch down around the ankles, and Brandon Phillips just scoops it out there in the shallow right. Moving on contact with two out, two run score. Duval ends up at third base. And it is six nothing here in the top of the second, Cincinnati. Well, Shebler bats for the second time in two innings. 
Hammers this ball into left. Bourne going back near the wall. He's not going to get it. That's a multi home run game for Scott Shebler. Two run homer down the right field line in the first. A three run homer the other way over the 376 mark in left field here in the second. This has now been a five run inning and it is nine nothing Reds. Boy, Shepler on his way to the home run cycle. I mean, he powered one to right field the first time up, and this time he really shows you some strength as he goes opposite field, the pitch up above the letters, or at least above the waist. Boy, oh boy. Well, two been homers. A while, been a while since we've seen one quite like this. Yeah. Two homers, five RBIs for Shebler, giving him six home runs, 24 runs batted in. This is the kind of game that you'll see a position player or two pitching tonight for the Diamondbacks. Nine nothing here in the second. All this action in this inning coming with two men out and nobody on. And if you believed in jinxes, you'd say, well, I said it looked like it's going to be an easy second for. Zach Godley two men out nobody on since that happened since that was uttered he's not been able to retire a batter five straight have reached all have scored first career multi home run game for Scott Shebler big night for him big night for the Reds and we're only in the second. Five runs batted in, a career high for Shebler. Godley had given up eight home runs, 57 innings this year. He's now given up three in an inning and two thirds. Hammered in the center by Suarez, but playable for Pollock to retire the side. But another big inning for Cincinnati. Another multi home run effort by Shebler. Five RBIs in the game, and it is nine nothing red. Off the second for Arizona tonight's IGS bringing the energy will show you against Anthony Discofani in his career six for six two doubles a home run and three RBIs. Now even before Mac Jenkins became the pitching coach as bullpen coach he's the one that formulates the scouting report and how they attack each hitter. He's not an old school guy uses a lot of the new saber metrics so we'll see how they attack Goldschmidt here with those perfect numbers against Disco. All right, let's see how they go about it. Goldsmith at 305 with 20 home runs, 78 runs batted in. And at one ball and one strike.
none of that six for six coming this year is Steve Scalfani did not pitch against the Diamondbacks in the series back at Cincinnati back in July. Lifetime he's 0 1 and 2 starts with a 7 plus ERA against Arizona. Now a full count. And just to complete the uh, the information regarding Rafi Lopez, the catcher, 28 year old coming up from AAA Louisville to make room on the roster. Tony Renda was optioned down to the Louisville team. The club now, in effect, has three active catchers, although one of them, Barnhart, nursing a right hand injury. Goldschmidt last night, two hits, five at bats. They came in his last two times up to the right side, and Phillips. And for the first time in his career, Di Scalfani retires Goldschmidt. That will be Jake Lamb. Jake Lamb appeared in the game last night off the bench, did not start. Pinch hit in the seventh inning and lined out to the shortstop. He had a very good first half of the season, but the second half for Lamb has not gone nearly as well. Hitting just 200 since the All Star break for Jake Lamb. He's had a breakout year in terms of home runs. Yeah, they were politicking to try to get him on the All Star game. His numbers were so good in the first half, and he's just completely fallen off. And some around the Diamondbacks feel that the way he's changed his batting style and his stance of the plate have something to do with that. Last year and very early in the year he held his hands very high then they he thought he was late on everything so then they they dropped his hands a little bit in front of him but he had some motion with his hands got some rhythm going now he gets his hands down around his his waist and they kind of sit there still. It's very difficult to hit from a perfectly still position. See a lot of hitters that always have a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of movement. You saw that split graphic 291 in the first half, 200 in the second half for Lamb. And he is going to be out on strikes here. That pitch was in the dirt. Cabrera throws him out at first base. It's a strikeout, the first of the game for Di Scalfani and a 2 3 put up. Well, the slider that Di Scalfani throws is one unlike a lot of pitcher sliders. This one goes straight down. I'm not sure how he's able to impart the kind of spin on that pitch that makes it go down, but a lot of sliders will go across a little bit and down. His is just nothing but straight down depth. So he gets the first two here in the second. Deals now with Yasmani Tomas. Tomas, 26 home runs, 263 average. Half those home runs have come after the All Star break. Tomas the guy who signed that big six year sixty eight million dollar contract Cuban native prior to last season takes him through twenty twenty. In a season from an outfield standpoint for Arizona that has seen injuries and ineffectiveness force them to move players all around he has the most starts both in left field and in right field on this team this year pretty much playing right field every day now strike three called Di Scalfani paints the outside part of the plate and the Diamondbacks go in order in the second.
Sundays. PGA Pro Jimmy Hanlon gives terrific tips plus recaps the week in golf. Get inside the golf zone with Jimmy Hanlon presented by American Eagle Mortgage and Farm and Guard tomorrow at 8 p.m. on Fox Sports Ohio. New pitcher, new second baseman in for Arizona. New pitcher is Vicente Campos. And the new second baseman is Brandon Drury. So Gene Segura leaves the game. Campos takes over for Godley, who throws 45 pitches, gives up nine runs, nine hits in two innings. There's Drury at second. And Campos making his major league debut. Right-hander Campos called up from Double A Mobile just two days ago. As Chris said, making his big league debut here tonight. He was with the Yankees organization until acquired at the end of July in the Tyler Clippard deal. Pop up on the infield. The shortstop Owings will make the play. And retiring Cabrera for the first out here in the third. Yeah, talk about a guy that has been through all the different levels of the minor leagues this year. He was in Triple A with the Yankees for one game. He played in the Florida State League to start the year off, where he pitched in ten games. He got moved up to the Eastern League, and I guess he was also in Trenton, the Double A team for the Yankees, before he went up to Scranton, Wilkes-Barre. So he's been all over the place between. A ball, double A, triple A, and now he gets a shot here in the major leagues. That's the kind of year it's been for the Diamondbacks from their pitching standpoint. They're just looking for a pitcher to put his finger in the dike and stop the flood. Di Scalfani hit it hard, but out into center field his first time. And if we get a report on why Gene Segura left the game, we'll pass that along. And again, Brandon Drury has taken over at second base. Interesting, really, because Segura was late coming out of the dugout to bat to lead off the bottom of the first inning. In fact, the home plate umpire had to go over there, Rob Drake, and said, Well, are we going to get a batter here to start this game? Meanwhile, Di Scafani was kind of pacing around the rubber and the pitching mound waiting for a batter. And maybe he just doesn't feel well. He may be, yeah, as you say, maybe just under the weather. Chip Hill had pointed to his stomach when uh, Segura was late coming out, as if to say, got a little stomach ailment going on. So maybe that is indeed the case with Gene Segura. Well, when you point to your stomach, you're usually indicating that it's time to eat dinner. Correct, but uh, he's a professional athlete, and I'm a professional eater. <laughs> Slight difference, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, they don't confuse me with Joey Chestnut, right? Hot dog eating fool. Oh. Although, if there's someone on our crew that could compete. He'd yeah. be the guy that we would nominate. Me? Yeah. No, no, no. I can think of a couple of others. Two and one now to Hamilton, who has a hit, and he's bounced out already. He's up for the third time in the game here in the third. And why would Jim Day be staring at me as if I'm going to say his name? Swing and a miss, and a ball down and in. Two balls, two strikes. See Billy choking up on that bat. Yeah, I'm pretty certain that they have one of those super humongous hot dogs here that some ballpark sell. I just saw a gentleman walk in the concourse with one. And of course, Jim Day, that's off limits for him now because he's on a big time diet. That leaves you. 
Foul ball out of play. How can a guy, I'm just going to throw this out there, how can a guy that's on a diet be eating a big cup of ice cream at dinner tonight? Well, maybe that's part of his diet. Maybe you ought to. Sweets only diet? Go to his nutritionist. That was a small tub for the record. <laughs> oh, you're listening. I'm sorry, Jim. Very small taste. Strike three called to Hamilton, so the Reds go in order in the top of the third. They'll take on the Cardinals. You can do that for as low as $12. Thanks to Kingsgate Transportation, the first 25,000 fans will receive an A. Eugenio Suarez bobblehead. For tickets, 513-381-REDS or visit reds.com slash tickets. Back to work goes Anthony D. Sclafani. He gets the shortstop of the D-backs, Chris Owings, to lead it off. Then the catcher, Goswitch, and then the pitcher, Campos. Six batters faced or the minimum through two thanks to the double play ball so far by Di Sclafani. He gets a ground ball here to Phillips hustling down the line. Owings he darn near beat that out. Phillips laid back on the ball and Owings almost made him pay. Well one thing that Di Sclafani has shown tonight is that he owns that low outside spot in the strike zone to right handers and because the Diamondbacks don't have much in the way of left handed hitting tonight he. Ought to be able to have a nice night of it. Of course, nine runs certainly help him, but he's got to kill, still get out there and get after it. Just can't start pumping fastballs in there just for fun. Well, that one looked like it got Cabrera. Take a look at that again, see what happened here. They caught the corner of the mask down near his chin. He has the hockey style mask. Tucker Barnhart when he first came up he wore that mask but he switched away from it. Back to the old fashioned mask. Tucker in the dugout. So he has that right hand wrapped. At least the wrist area. Sore right hand. Came the other day when he. Uh, remember the Dodgers were so upset because they did not get a catcher's interference call. On a swing, the bat of the Dodger player hit the glove of Barnhart. The ball caught him in the right hand, talking about Tucker. That's where the injury comes from. There's strike three called. Tuffy go switch. The catcher is rung up, so three strikeouts now. The batter will be Campos. I mean, Di Scafani, look at the grouping of pitches right down there on the outside corner. The put away pitch is number four. 
I mean, really the best you're going to do with that pitch, unless you're really looking for it out there is foul it off. But you give up on it because it comes out of Di Scafani's hand looking like it's going to miss the zone. Well, Vicente Campos had his first innings worth of action on the mound, and now he gets his first at bat. And he's down two strikes. Playing the part of a hitter up there with those neon batting gloves. Bard. Certainly. Bat, borrow. I think those are bicycle gloves, actually. <laughs> to Cozart. What is this? He can't run to first base? Kid's been watching too much TV. I couldn't agree more. by authority of the Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. And nobody sees sports quite the way Colin Cowherd and Jason Whitlock do. The brains to know and the guts to say. Catch Colin and Jason for FS1's new daily sports talk show, Speak for Yourself, weeknights, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Three inning totals in this game, nine nine zero Reds, all zeros for the Diamondbacks. Vicente Campos back to the mound. He had a one, two, three third, his first ever big league inning. Been in pro ball since 2009. Chris talked about him coming up with the Mariners organization. He shouldn't be tired out there from running to first base because he gave it the old. 10 year veteran jog down the line. Well, we're, we're going to show that to you again because, you know, I don't know, maybe I'll just expose myself as an old man that likes to shout at clouds. Oh my gosh, that's off the clouds. That is going to be the third home run of this game. Pardon me, the fourth home run of this game for the Reds and for Zach Cozart as he rounds the bases for the 16th time this year. That is a new career high for the Reds shortstop. In home runs. He last homered on the 18th of July against Atlanta. And a new career high for him right here. Well, he hit the ball very sharply last night, a one pinch hit appearance, a double down the left field line. This time he gets a little elevation. Well, he has two hits in three at bats tonight. So we got Votto with one, Shebler with two, and Cozart with one. Four home runs in this game for the Reds.
Red is, uh, Reds had actually gone five consecutive games without a home run until tonight. They've unloaded four of them were only in the fourth inning. Lotto a double and a home run to show for his night's work here early on. Ten nothing Cincinnati. And we're only in the fourth inning. At the top of the Reds lineup. They have really been impressive so far. Nine hits, 13 at bats, four homers, 10 RBIs so far out of the top six. Reds have a real chance to set a new season high in runs scored in this game. The most they've scored is 13. That was way back on the 23rd of April. They did it against the Cubs. They have 10 already in this game. Votto is thrown out there. So he's retired for the first time. I, I got to ask you a question here. All right. You saw Votto running down the line like that. That's the way you play the game of baseball. It's a, almost a sure out. 99 and 90 percent. That, that second baseman is going to feel that ball and he's going to go down the line. But here's the way. A kid making his major league debut runs down the line. That's embarrassing. The Diamondbacks have got they got a lot of work to do here in the desert. And it's, it needs to start with attitude. I mean you got to wonder when Campos went into the dugout even though he was going back to the mound would someone pull him aside and say hey. That's not the way the game of baseball is played. Well, somebody should if they don't. You let him do that in his first game what's going to change down the road. I'll tell you they used to have guys who played for this team that would pull them aside and do that. If you did that around Matt Williams he'd let you know. And of course Williams is a coach on this team right here although I don't know if he feels like he has jurisdiction to talk to the pitchers. But I mean, it's just bad for the game of baseball. Interesting that you bring up some of the old Diamondbacks because before today's game. They had the fifth annual alumni Diamondbacks game here at Chase Field. And I mean, some of the heroes of years past here in Phoenix were in attendance. Including a handful of players that, uh, one time or another, donned a red uniform. Now Reggie Sanders hit a ball in that alumni game today that went. One hop off the center field wall. That's not the alumni game, but you could say that it could be. There are a lot of members on this coaching staff that played for the Diamondbacks at one time or another. Mark Grace is on that coaching staff. Luis Gonzalez played today. He, of course, is in the front office here with the Diamondbacks. Yeah, the two managers of the two alumni teams were. Mark Grace on one side, Matt Williams on the other. Luis Gonzalez apparently helped divide the teams up. Grace was giving him a hard time about feeling like they didn't have a fair shake. I'll tell you, the ball that Reggie hit, and to watch Reggie Sanders hit and then run, you swear that guy was still 28 years old. No doubt about it. He looks like he's in just fabulous shape. One of the guys that was out there in uniform was. Guy who's been the bench coach for the Reds the last couple of years prior to this year, Jay Bell, whose son plays in the Reds organization, Brantley Bell. He's up in Dayton having a pretty good year. Mm -hmm. Hammered in the left field by Phillips and down in front of Bourne for a base hit. So Phillips is three for three as he continues his assault at the plate. Since the All Star break, he was hitting 339 coming into this game. In the season second half. 11 hits now by the Reds. Well, this is the kind of game that you get a chance to pad your batting average a little bit. Or if you're Scott Shebler, you get to pad your home run column. A two run bomb and a three run bomb. First multi. Home run game of his career here. Five RBIs, a career high for Shebler. 
You're going to have another multi run home run here with Phillips aboard. Two men out. Run already in on the Cozart home run. And a ball that's hit into right sharply again by Shebler. He has a three for three afternoon, as does Brandon Phillips. Three more hits in this inning, and now a dozen by the Reds in this game. Boy, the ball just really coming off of Shebler's bat tonight. Veteran Tuffy Gosowicz, the catcher, been around for a long time in professional baseball. He goes out and talks with Vicente Campos. Suarez will bat. He's one for two. He's hit the ball hard twice. So we're talking about the the alumni game played here today. We mentioned Jay Bell, who was the bench coach the last two years here in uniform for what they called the Purple Team. Reggie Sanders, Chris mentioned Willie Bloomquist, who spent a little bit of time with the Reds at the tail end of the season a number of years ago was here. Kelly Stinnett a little bit of time in his career with the Reds. Greg Swindell the same. Elmer descends if I'm not mistaken he was an opening day starter one year. He was and a coach in the Reds organization still. All those former Reds playing in the fifth annual alumni game here today for the Diamondbacks. Line to left and drop right at him. Bourne dropped the ball. Phillips will score with two men out. Runners are on the move. Shebler ends up at third. And it is now 11 nothing in favor of the Reds. As Bourne had that line drive, I mean to tell you, right at him, go in and out of his glove, out in left field. Now, well, an embarrassing night in just about every different facet of the game for the Diamondbacks. That is very un Michael Bourne like. He's usually a very sure handed center fielder and I don't know. What happened. That's an outfielder and a veteran player's just worst nightmare. Ball was hit hard it was sinking and so on but. Boy there's just nowhere to hide. So the seventh man to bat in the inning is the catcher Ramon Cabrera. Now you get a kid who's making his major league debut out there. He needs about every bit of defensive help that he can get. Some would say he's paying the price for that little jog of a run down the first by getting hit hard here in his All second right. inning of work. Baseball karma. Disrespect the game a little bit is going to get you. Cabrera's bounced back to the mound and popped to the shortstop. He's 0 for 2. He hit hard, but right at the second baseman, Drury. So the inning is over, but the Reds pick up two more. Zach Kozart, a career high 16th home run as he led off this one here in the fourth inning. 11 0 Reds.
by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further. And by Cincinnati Children's, changing the outcome together. Nice night so far for your Cincinnati Reds. 11 runs, 12 hits in this game. Knocked out the starter, Zach Godley, after two. He gave up nine runs on nine hits. Reds did four balls over the wall. Two by Scott Shebler, one by Votto, one by Kozar. Meanwhile, Anthony D. Sclafani faced the minimum through three. He's not a lot of hit. He's fanned three. Back to work here in the bottom of the fourth. along a special happy birthday wish today within the Reds organization. How about to double A Pensacola Blue Wahoos manager Pat Kelly celebrating a birthday today on this August the 27th. What a good guy Pat Kelly is. He's a lifer baseball man. Uh, the Reds are fortunate to have him in the organization. You're not going to mention how old Pat is. I don't know how old he is or I would. You know Anthony DeScafani when you have an 11 run lead early on you know it, it's sometimes tough to keep your intensity. I mean he doesn't want to give up anything today. In fact he hasn't given up anything. But what he can also do is use this game as kind of a live game bullpen if you want to look at it like that where he can begin to work on some things that he's probably worked on in the bullpen but take into the game you know you're reluctant to do that in a one nothing game or a tight game where a home runs going to make the difference but when you're up by 11 you know if he's working on his change up he can throw a few more of those if he likes if he's working on say an inside four seam fastball to left handers like he threw right there that might be something that he would like to refine and use in game situation. There's nothing like the res the re instant results you get from throwing a pitch and then seeing how the hitter reacts to it. That tells you as a pitcher whether your stuff is good or not. That ball's going to get up the middle and Michael Bourne who committed that error out in left field on the drop line drive is aboard with the first hit of the game for Arizona. What you're saying he has a margin of error that he would not have in a close game. But I mean you can use that to kind of experiment a little bit. Say you know what I wonder if this pitch will work on left hander. So you throw it to a left hander and you see how he reacts to it. You know maybe he's working on taking a little bit more off his change up. It's one thing that we've noticed that this year he has not thrown as many change ups especially left handed hitters as he he did last year. In fact, he's throwing about only 50% as many. So, you know, maybe the reason is because he doesn't feel good with it yet. His grip isn't there for whatever reason. Maybe that's a pitch that he needs to work on and can use a game like this to do so. Of course, Di Stefani didn't make his debut this year until the 10th of June due to that oblique strain that hit him in the middle of spring training. A little bit of a setback. About halfway through his recovery, finally made his debut on the 10th of June against Oakland. Now he rings up A.J. Pollock for the second out of the inning in his fifth strikeout. Pollock's had a tough go since coming back and being activated. Yesterday on his opening day, he went 0 for 5. He's now 0 for 2. A strikeout looking and a ground ball double play. So here's Paul Goldschmidt. Di Sclafani retired him for the first time ever on a ground ball to Phillips his first time up.
interesting last night with a left hander on the mound for the Reds and Finnegan the Diamondbacks had an entire right handed hitting lineup in there today against Dee Stefani with lefties hitting 321 against him and righties only 185 they have two lefties in there the third Suarez to Phillips out at second on Michael Bourne and that puts an end to the Diamondbacks fourth inning. Brought to you by T-Mobile. Gentlemen, have you caught the act of Gary Sanchez, the young catcher for the New York Yankees? First player in MLB history with 11 home runs in his first 23 career games. Last 12 games, 500 average, 22 for 44, four doubles, 10 long ones, and 17 runs driven in. It has been an unbelievable start to a career. Yeah he was called up what the day after a rod was released by the Yankees they had a couple of rookies come up and they homered back to back I think it was the first time in history early part of August and uh, Sanchez has just continued to rake nice backhanded pick there by Owings who looked like he slipped and fell down on another hard hit ball by Anthony Di Scalfani but recovered in time. And they kind of slid for that ball it looked like to get it make the play. Top of the order now and Billy Hamilton. He'll even on once. He's single, grounded out, been called out on strikes. One for five on Wednesday against Texas. One for five last night. One for three tonight. His average since the All Star break for the first time since then has dropped under 300. He started this game, second half of the year, at 299, and he strikes out here. Third strikeout for Campos. Two men out. Campos actually looks pretty good out there. The youngster making his major league debut has got a nice change up. That's what he did to get Hamilton out. Really, the only run that the Reds have gotten off him that's been an earned run has been that solo home run by Cozart. Twenty-four-year-old Venezuelan. From Laguira. Venezuela not too far outside the capital of Caracas. You talk about seeing a lot of parts of the country you, you mentioned where he has pitched 
this year. Tampa. Southeast Trenton up the coast in New Jersey. Mobile down south. Scranton Wilkesbury. Steel country. We've been all over the place. And I guess the biggest trip he's made is coming out west. Yeah. And then here. Although that's when that coach seat turns into a first class seat. The meal money goes from fast food to four star. It's on the patch on the sleeve of Campos and it's on all the Diamondbacks players. We got a chance we'll talk about that. Hozar draws the walk. Passing away earlier this year is Joe Garagiola. Long time baseball player, broadcaster. Joe is from the St. Louis area. He and Yogi Bear grew up together, passed away earlier this year. They put the patch on the uh, the sleeve. Long time affiliation with the Diamondbacks. In fact, when they started back in the late 90s, he was a broadcaster out here. His son Joe was the general manager back in the early days of this franchise. In fact, he was the GM when they won the World Series in 2001, something they celebrated a lot of today with all the alumni back. Joe Garagiola Sr.'s son Joe now works for Major League Baseball. And we're happy to say that. Uh, Joe's grandson Chris Gargiola works in the Reds media relations department this summer as an intern doing a nice job very nice young man Chris is and boy Joe Gargiola entertained baseball fans for decades Motto grounds out Joe Gargiola was 90 years old when he passed away. By Budweiser featuring country music artist Chase Rice. You can do that at as low as $32. Get a ticket to the game, a Reds trucker hat, and the opportunity to enjoy the concert from the field. Purchase today at Reds.com slash Chase Rice. Jake Lamb leads it off. He struck out his first time. I'm 25 years old out of Seattle played at the University of Washington out there in Seattle drafted back in 2012 by the Diamondbacks made note of the fact that he's had a breakout year this year last year six home runs 34 RBIs and 107 games this year 25 home runs 
seventy nine runs batted in and one hundred and twenty games thus far. There's strike three called and so Lamb for the second time is out on strikes and that's six of them now by Dee Scalfani. Well the Reds are putting the strikeout pitch to good use here last night it was. The left hander Brandon Finnegan who struck out 12 and six innings and I'm not so sure that. That Dee Scalfani is going to get to that point tonight but boy. Six strikeouts making it look awfully easy here once he's been given that big lead. Glad you brought up Finnegan because it brings up an interesting point. A story about the game last night with Lamb's comments afterwards said he was asked about why he felt he had uh, the strikeout pitch going, why he was so effective against the Diamondbacks, la uh, Diamondbacks last night. And he said, because of the changeup, which you had brought up throughout the game, he said, when I faced them the first time at home, I didn't have that pitch. And now it's working better for me. And I just feel that that pitch is going to get better and better for him more consistent the more he throws it. I mean you just have to have a pitch if you're a left handed pitcher to get right handers off your fastball something that is slow and goes away from him. the same that these Scafani, you know could use some improvement on that change up when he faces lefties. Now what helps him in this lineup there aren't a lot of lefties in this Diamondbacks lineup. But there are some lineups like the Dodgers for instance that will just load them up against a right handed starter Cardinals do the same thing. Mm -hmm. well, those 12 strikeouts by Finnegan last night represented a career high and a season high by a Reds pitcher. He was trying. Finnegan was to get his ninth win didn't get it. Turned in a very nice effort last night. Tomas jammed here he may get a hit out of it. Botto chases it and cannot get it. Pretty good pitch by Dee Stefani but in the end Tomas gets a flare single into right. Well a jam shot that just works out for him right here that ball right in on his hands. So here's Chris Owings. He'll pop this ball up on the infield Votto and Phillips and it's Joey that makes the play. Owings is 0 for 2. There are two men out. Well as always as a reminder as you enjoy tonight's game we'll bring you a little bit later on a Miller time moment of the game brought to you by Miller Lite. There's that pool Chris out there in right you center we were talking Jim Day about. In there, did you? I know I, he went out shopping for a new speedo today. I was looking for him out there. I didn't see him but then again we had talked about it being tomorrow so he's probably waiting for the day All game right. to do that. We'll do one of his in-game reports no doubt from the pool lounging back with a Drink with an umbrella in his hand. He and Marty were looking for one of those two for one deals on the, the speedos that they have in August down here. Well, the story was that Marty said, You're looking for a speedo? I've got a drawer full of them at home. I could maybe get one shipped out here. <laughs> Tuffy Ghost, which struck out his first time. Thanks for being with us. Have a great night. Yeah. Well, Tom Brenneman joined the fun. And his TV partner, Bob Brentley, one of the games long ago when they actually broadcast him out there. Oh. Now, see, those guys are two good sports right there. Back in the day. You know, one thing about Jim Day, though, he's not afraid to do anything like that. You put a challenge in front of him, he attacks it with. Fervor, especially if his Twitter people call him out.
as we suspected earlier. Gene Segura left the game due to illness early on here tonight. Base hit by Gosowicz up the middle. And will send Tomas down to second base. So it's two on with two out. Marks the first time in the game that the Diamondbacks had the two runners on in the same inning. And here's Campos to bat for the second time. It'll be interesting to see should he ground out again. How he runs down to first base. He's come on and worked three innings, allowed two runs, three hits. Set the side down in order in the third, a four batter fifth with a walk thrown in there. So he's given Chip Hale a little bullpen relief. Hale in his second year, he's a former Wildcat. He played collegially out in this area at University of Arizona, I should say in the state. Lined it to Votto at first base. Hit hard there by Campos. And Votto makes the play, and the bottom of the fifth comes to an end. as we emanate from Phoenix Arizona which is like a second home to these Cincinnati Reds because of course the spring training home is in nearby Goodyear Arizona so you spend a lot of time here and you indeed do some shopping as did Adam Duvall back in spring training gentlemen he bought a sewing machine he not only has it in his living room but he knows how to use it first couple of times out he said he ruined a couple of old Pieces of clothing, then worked on some old shirts. But Adam's a guy that likes to dress nicely, and you know, the style today, a little tighter clothes. So nowadays, he buys his clothes, streamlines them to how he wants them to fit, and indeed, sews them himself on his own sewing machine in his living room. Call him throwback, renaissance man, perhaps progressive, however you want to label it. I like all those terms. I, I tell you, that's very impressive that he can do that. And I wonder, the natural question is, I wonder how he learned how to do that. That's a good question right there, but I can imagine that if he continues his career on the pace he is right now, and it's an awfully good pace, he may end up with his own line of clothing before too long. Or he might have teammates coming to him and saying, hey, I got a little something that needs to be tucked in here or taken in there. Do you mind helping me out? Kind of like somebody who's good with the uh, the shears and gives haircuts. He could he could be uh, in line to do a little tailoring. Good skill to have right there. Uh, you know I don't know where Jim Day comes up with these stories, but 
they're just interesting one more interesting than the other. I didn't know they taught they taught sewing down there at University of Louisville. We don't know that he learned it there at, at U of L. Well, they could have. Very progressive, innovative school down yeah. there. Wonder if my son's in that class. He hasn't told you about that. I'm going to ask you if I can tell you that. First walk given up by. Diamondbacks pitching in this game goes to Duval. Well, you see these guys when they slide on occasion, they'll have a big tear in their pants. Maybe Rick Stowe comes up to Duval and says, Hey, I'm running a little bit behind. Do you mind uh, stepping in and helping me out a little bit here? I'll send four or five pairs of pants home with you. You can fix them up. It's a good skill to have. So is hitting the long ball. Here's Brandon Phillips working on a perfect night tonight. He's three for three. And he scored three times. Raised well, his average already five points today. Started at 282, now up to 287. Another guy with a perfect night going. Shebler waiting on deck. Hit hard again by Phillips to center. Pollock goes back. He makes the catch for out number one. Boy, they are really squaring up a lot of baseballs here tonight. And here's Shebler. Three for three, two home runs, five runs batted in for Shebler tonight. He's raised his average 16 points. Started at 210. And again with a runner on, Duval leads away at first base. Good off speed pitch there by Campos. Shebler way out in front. The 11 0 Reds, four in the first, five in the second. Reds knock the Diamondback starter Zach Godley out of the game after two. Trying to get even in this series trying to force a rubber game tomorrow. 4 10 Cincinnati start. 3 30 with Reds live tomorrow afternoon. Got under it hits it in the air did Shebler into center. Two out. So Campos trying to get through his fourth inning with the work. We'll deal now with a Eugenio Suarez. He's hit the ball hard three times in this game. Single in the first, lined out to Pollock in the second. And hit that scalding line drive in the fourth out to left, which went in and out of the glove of Michael Bourne. And there's still no action down in the Diamondbacks bullpen, which would lead you to believe that Campos, four innings may not be the end of the line for him tonight. Suarez stays alive.
Cabrera waiting on deck. Talked a lot last night about the fact that the Reds went in with the second best record in baseball since the All Star break. Lost last night, but they're still 22 and 16. Cubs at 29 and 10. The Mariners and the Tigers now a half game ahead of the Reds at 23 and 16. Second best record. And then the Reds at 22 and 16. Tomas a step in front of the track makes the catch on that ball hit by Suarez. Reds leave a runner here in the sixth. Di Stefani on the mound, looking for his eighth win of the year for the Reds. Only one time as the D-backs had two runners on in the same inning. He's walked one. He has struck out six. Easier to go about things, certainly when you have a large advantage. If you've talked about a couple of times tonight. Well, it is, but you still have to keep your intensity, and he's not let up one bit. Diamondbacks have scratched out three hits overall, but he just keeps peppering away at that low and outside corner. There's not a whole lot they've been able to do with it. He's Clefani back to work. He gets. Brandon Drury to lead things off here in the sixth inning. Second time that Drury's been to the plate. Struck out back in the fourth inning after replacing Gene Segura, who left the game it was under the weather. Drury started at third base last night. It was three for five. He's been all over the place this year for them, primarily in the outfield. He started in left and right at third, at second base this year. Took over at second base for Segura tonight. He had the night, the kind of night last night that if you see him play for the very first time, and it's the first time that I've seen Brandon Drury play live, he leaves you with a positive, you know, uh, remembrance of him because you know he played well on the field. He had a couple of base hits. The hardest ball he hit turned out to be a, an out, but he just seems to have good play coverage. It's this ball well on the left, but a good jump on that thing out there by Adam Duvall is the first out of the sixth. Invite you to check out the new Fioptics District rooftop at the ballpark this season. For only $15, you get general admission seating, access to the exclusive rooftop patio, plus your first drink on the house. For tickets, is at reds.com slash district. That's the new Fioptics District rooftop. At Great American Ballpark. Oh, 
Michael Bourne a hit his last time he's one for two. Bourne's story an interesting one this year because he's been all over the place. Spring training with the Braves released by them. Signed late in April by Toronto ultimately released by them. Signed in the middle of May by the Diamondbacks. Called up in the middle of the month from the minor leagues at Reno. And with this club since then. And back in the day back in. Early. 2010s. This guy was a terror on the bases. For the Houston Astros. He led the league in stolen bases three consecutive years for Houston. He made the all-star team in 2012 as a member of the Braves but when he was at Houston you're right he was really flying high in fact it was nice for him to do that because that's his hometown. Swung on and missed here strikeout number seven for D. Sclafani. That's back when Houston was uh, was in our league in the National League before they switched. Handled out there by Shebler. Pollock retired and a 1 2 3 6 by Dee Scofani. Game summary. It's been a night of long balls for the Reds. This one in the first inning by Votto, his 21st of the year, made it two to nothing. Three batters later, with two runners aboard, Scott Schepler, he bested Votto, hit this one a little bit further, almost in the same spot, made it four to nothing. Second inning, going the other way, Scott Schepler, first multi-home run game of his career, made it nine to nothing. And in the fourth inning, Zach Cozart in his first game back after missing a week of action. A career best 16th of the year for Zach Cozart. Four home run balls for the Reds. Our Honda game summary makes it 11 0 Cincinnati into the seventh. Vicente Campos back to the mound. Fifth inning of work for him. In the air to left field and that ball is caught by Ricky Weeks who just took over from Michael Bourne out there. Bourne moved over to center field. Pollock has left the game. 
Phil Gosselin has taken over at first base. A few changes for Arizona in a blowout game. Well, it's a blowout game, and everybody feels good in that Reds dugout. But if you're one of those players that does not have a hit and hasn't really contributed tonight, you feel like you didn't get the invitation to the party. And that might be the case there for Ramon Cabrera. 0 for 4 while he's watching everybody else pound out base hits and home runs. Say that you know, anytime you you play a baseball game, win or lose, you're always looking for some kind of a silver lining. And of course, for the Reds tonight, it's been everywhere and, and abundantly obvious. The offense, the pitching of Di Stefani, and so on. But if you're the Diamondbacks, you've got to think about you know what they're getting out of young Vincente Campos, young man that they acquired in a trade. He's been all over the place in the minor leagues this year. He really doesn't have much in a way of big league time. I mean. Even triple A time, except for one game pitched in triple A prior to tonight. And here he is in a in a game in which the Reds bats are heated up to you know white hot. Has pretty much thrown the pitches that he wants to. He's shown a nice slow breaking ball right there, his curve ball. He's got a harder slider. His fastball is nice. He's got a repeatable and clean delivery. And the new first baseman. And he's throwing strikes. Yeah. And gets the red down in order in the seventh. Crunch time here in Phoenix. With the Reds Live pregame show presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing. Tomorrow, finale of this series, Reds Live will start at 3.30. Homer Bailey looks to bounce back from a rough start on Monday against the Dodgers. Diamondbacks and Archie Bradley to the mound. And as always, the game will be also available on Fox Sports Go. One of the interesting uh, sideline stories about the game tomorrow is that Homer Bailey will be making his first ever start here in Phoenix. I mean he's in his 10th year in the big leagues and he has never started here. So it used to be bank one ballpark now it's Chase Field. He's never started here so first time for him here tomorrow. Changes for the Reds. Ivan De Jesus Junior has taken over for Votto at first base and batting third. 
Peraza has taken over for Brandon Phillips at second base. He's batting fifth. These are the only changes for the Redlegs. Base hit up the middle here by Phil Gosselin, his first time up after replacing Paul Goldschmidt at first base. Dean Sclafani went seven his last time out. Eight is his longest. And that was an eight inning outing against Atlanta back on the 20th of July. He's at 85 pitches as he works here in the seventh. Lamb has struck out twice, once swinging, once looking. De Stefani, seven strikeouts, his career high is 10. In the air by Lamb, but tracked down by Billy Hamilton for out number one. Tomas tonight a strikeout and a flare single into right field. D Max have managed just four hits against D Scalfani. Reds have a dozen to go along with their 11 runs. Backhand by the third baseman Suarez. They get an out at second and an out at first base. Good turn there by Peraza with a runner. Goslin bearing down on him. Second double play of the night turned by the Reds.
Right, thank you Brian. Thank you Jeff. And yeah there'll be a lot of highlights tonight both from an offensive standpoint long balls by Votto two by Shepler one by Cozart and certainly the pitching seven shutout innings thus far turned in by Anthony D. Sclafani who started the year six and zero, oh, trying to get his eighth win of the year here tonight. Meanwhile back to the hill goes Vicente Campos his sixth inning of work. Shot out to left and Weeks going to his left makes the play on that ball. Luckily for the Diamondbacks, Campos was a guy who has been starting not only this year but throughout his career. He made 24 starts at the various levels he had pitched at this year, so he stretched out. Mm -hmm. They've taken advantage of that. This has been. A save the bullpen kind of outing for Campos. You better believe it. I mean, I said from the very beginning when the Reds scored all those runs in the first two innings that this might be one of those games where you see a position player come in to pitch. And with the job that Campos has done, they won't figure to need that. And they still just now have gotten a pitcher up in their bullpen. Look down at the Reds bullpen, see no action down there. You know when we come to Arizona we sit right next to the home broadcasting team and in that booth they have a stats guy mm -hmm. Scott Studley Snyder and one of the best around boy he comes up with some of the more obscure but interesting information and we were talking tonight about how the two starting pitchers Anthony D they're Scott otherwise known as Studley he uh, Told me that you know we were talking about how the two starting pitchers tonight were actually both from the SEC. They both pitched college ball about the same time. Di Scafani pitched for Florida. Godley pitched for the University of Tennessee, and indeed, they both did pitch in the same game when Tennessee and Florida played against each other. So we really didn't get a chance to talk about that very much because Godley was in and out of the game before you know it. But the interesting thing about that particular game, and it happened back on April the 2nd, 2011, Di Scafani pitched uh, in relief, two and two thirds innings, didn't give up any hits. For Florida. Florida. Godley pitched for Tennessee, pitched one inning, didn't give up any runs. But Di Scafani's team, the Florida Gators, beat the Tennessee Volunteers 11 to 2. What's the score of this game? 11 to nothing. How about that? Kind of freaky. Some fate stuff going on right there. We thank Studley for that note. Interesting sidebar about uh, Studley. And he can also tell you the best fishing spots in the Little Miami River. He can do that. Yeah. He'll walk in and he'll have 25 or 30 uh, index cards and say, Here's a little information if you want to take a look at it. And you're like, wow, you're kind of overwhelmed with all the information he can pass along. Line to left by Duval over the head of Weeks and over the wall. Adam Duval, number 29, adds to the home run brigade by the Reds tonight, their fifth of this game. And it is now 12 0 Reds. You might say that we've all hit the stitching out of this ball. Tonight our Volkswagen drive of the game and there it goes into the seats in left field. Out to the mound goes Chip Hale. Vicente Campos despite leaving after the home run ball did a nice job for the D-backs in long relief tonight. Arizona makes a pitching change. This is our skyline chili call to the bullpen.
Ovino Bracco. And down at Triple A this year, had 15 saves down there in 36 games. Bracco this year with the Diamondbacks. 0 and 2, 16 outings, a 5.94 ERA. Uh, just like his predecessor, he is also a young man. He's a young guy here, 23 years old. And he is also from Venezuela. Diamondbacks must have a, a complex down there that they've developed some some prospects in. Although I imagine that the political environment in Venezuela not nearly is conducive to figuring out how to get prospects to America as it used to be. Peraza batting for the first time in this game. What did he do a nice job and we talked on the open about it's great to have Cozart back in the lineup but while he was out the man who primarily filled in for him was Jose Peraza. He really did a nice job. I like the way he turned the double play at second base. Uh, it was a great double play. We really kind of glossed over it because it ended the inning. It was a hot smash down to third base for Suarez backhanded and threw it high to Peraza. But Peraza was able to keep his foot in the bag and turn a double play out of it. And that's one reason why a lot of people think that Peraza's long term future in the major leagues is second base. Drags his right foot, runners coming in there, and he throws. Good enough at first base to be able to complete the double play. That was a dandy twin killing. Couple of hits last night and a run batted in in six at bats. So in those games in which he filled in. For Cozart, six games, he went 13 for 30. It's this one hard in the center, and he's got himself another hit. First hit of the night, third hit of the series. And the Reds now have 14 hits this evening. And of course tomorrow's starter Homer Bailey probably in the dugout telling everybody well save a few of these for me. He's trying to bounce back from a subpar outing his last time out against the Dodgers. I don't think really anything to worry about. No. You know up and down when you come back from a long time off in surgery. It's not always a smooth return. And now is Shebler with another opportunity to try to come up with a third home run. Last guy to hit three home runs in a game for the Reds was Joey Votto. He did it last year at home against Philadelphia on the 9th of June. It was the third time in his career that he'd come up with three home runs in a game. That's the last time it's been done by a Reds player. Handled by Goslin. Inning over. Reds get another home run and another run. Adam Duvall is 29th of the year. 12 nothing Reds.
Broya had 11 hits and 11 consecutive at bats. He grounded into a double play in the eighth inning of the game today though. He came became one shy of tying the major league record and hasn't been done in over 60 years. Good number right there for Dustin Pedroia who was a guy who came up years ago with the Red Sox diminutive in size and people thought this guy's not going to be able to do what he thinks he can do over the course of many years and boy he has really proven everybody wrong. Well they said the same thing about Jose Altuve who may be one of the best players in the American League. And I think that's the kind of thing that gives a lot of incentive to a player like Tony Renda who was just recently sent down today by the Reds. But I mean baseball is one of those games where size sometimes is your attitude and not necessarily you know your your inseam. Jim mentioned about Corey Seager's 23rd home run. A shortstop record for the Dodgers. Wondering what your thought is on the rookie of the year. You have Seeger, who's having a very, very good year. And you have Trevor Story, who had equally good numbers, if not better numbers than Seeger, who is out for the year with injury. Hard to tell. You know, it's interesting that Seeger's home runs, and what does he have, 23 of them now? Right. That he, um, all time leader as far as shortstop. Home runs for Dodgers, but that has become a power position. I mean, Trevor Story has 27 home runs. Brad Miller of Tampa Bay has 25. Marcus Seaman, uh, Oakland has 23. So, you know, Ozark here has 16. Yeah, so it, it, it's a power position. Uh, so the Dodgers are kind of late to that party, but Seager, I'm sure, is going to be there for a long time, and uh, his numbers overall. The dwarf, I think everyone else is as far as batting average overall, is on base percentage, is slugging not as high as Trevor Story, but Story, of course, his his season, ended, his season ended after 97 games. He'll lose some juice, won't he? Because he's not playing every day and his name's not out there. Yeah, and, and it's a shame too because when he went down, it was pretty much they threw in the towel there in Colorado. That was a team that, you know, the way that the Giants and the and the, the uh, Dodgers really haven't gotten any better it seems like at the end of the year they're just both kind of treading water although the Dodgers are playing better now it would have been a year perhaps that the Rockies could have slipped right in there had they kept everybody healthy and played like their potential we're talking about Seeger and story the Diamondbacks while they don't put him in the mix for rookie of the year very happy with their rookie. Brandon Drury who is in the top four or five in most rookie offensive departments. But nothing numbers wise like Story or Seager. Distofani meanwhile will throw pitch number 100 here and he gets a strikeout his eighth and a one two three eighth inning that matches the most innings he's pitched in a game in his career.
Ohio. It's been brought to you by Kroger. Stop by your neighborhood Kroger to say big store wide. Great food, low prices at Kroger and by Toyota. For over 30 offers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Reds fans, you can catch all the action Saturday, September the 3rd, when the Reds are home taking on the Cardinals. You can do it for as low as $12. Thanks to Kingsgate Transportation, the first 25,000 fans will receive an A. Eugenio Suarez bobblehead. For tickets, 513-381-REDS or visit reds.com slash tickets. Speaking of... Here is the bobblehead man himself, a Eugenio Suarez, one for four tonight. You see no action out in the Reds bullpen. Anthony DeSclafani with that strikeout of Bracco through his 100th pitch. Picked up his seventh strikeout. So it appears as if he's going to go back out there to look for his first career complete game, first career shutout. Reds have had just one complete game this year. That was the complete game eight inning effort by Brandon Finnegan in that one nothing loss out in L.A. against Clayton Kershaw. Last complete game shutout win for the Reds was authored by Johnny Cueto last July, July the 7th at Washington. Down the left field line, another hit for the Reds. This is the second of the night by Suarez. He's going to turn this into a two base hit. A. Eugenio Suarez of the Reds gets double number 19. I'll tell you, he's having one heck of a game, Suarez is. He's played perfect defense. I mean, he has really snagged some shots down there, and he hits down the left field line with some authority here. Boy, he really likes to drop that bat head, doesn't he? They got off to a great start this year. Went through that terrible, what, two and a half or so month swoon. He came into this game, a Eugenio Suarez, over 300 since the break. A little bit better than that, even in the month of August. Started the day overall at 250. Here's Ramon Cabrera. Discofani is on deck. I'd be stu stunned if it was any other way. Cabrero for four in this game. Other than the pitcher, he is the only red. Did not have a hit in this 12 run, 15 hit attack. Towards shortstop, Owings gets it and unloads on to first base. An 0 for 5 night for Cabrera. Does move Suarez up. Here comes Di Scalfani to bat for himself. Uncharted waters, if you will, for him. Well, this is the type of game. I mean, you know, you have to admire the way Di Scalfani went about his business in a game which was dominated by offense. He could have easily gotten distracted and let things kind of get out of hand, walk a batter here and there, and give up a hit, give up a couple of runs. The Reds would probably still win, but it. It wouldn't be the type of effort that De Scafani wanted to give the Reds, you know, given the fact he only gets a play every fifth day. So I really like the fact that he's going to stay in there and try to get something that has become more and more elusive in Major League Baseball over the last few decades, which is a complete game and a complete game shutout. 
has walked one he has struck out seven. That walk from every walk Gene Segura to start the first inning and that's the only walk. He has given up. One runner. Has reached as far as second base for the Diamondbacks in this game that was your Yom Yasmani Tomas in the fifth inning. Kind of night that a manager can pretty much put it on cruise control, with the exception of maybe getting some of your regulars out of there early and getting some of the bench players some time. Reds fans, grab your buds and join our good friend Mo Egger from 700 WLW for the Reds fan cam coming up Friday night at the Holy Grail. It's your chance to answer Reds trivia, win some great prizes. It'd be part of Reds Live. Party starts 6 p.m. Friday at the Holy Grail. Look for Mo Egger from 700 WLW. Billy Hamilton with two out and a runner at third. Billy been on one time. He's been stuck on 18 stolen bases this month for the last week. His career high stolen bases in a month was 19. He did that last June. After today, four games remaining this month. An opportunity to tie and or break that mark. And also for him a big chance to surpass his career high in terms of stolen bases with he should easily be able to do. He stole 56 two years ago, 57 last year, sitting at 53 now. 179 in his career. In fact, an interesting note regarding Billy Hamilton since he made his major league debut on the 3rd of June 2013. He leads all major league players in stolen bases with those 179, almost 40 more than D. Gordon. Of course, Gordon missed 80 games this year due to his suspension to third and no play. Third baseman Lamb thought better of it. No way he's going to get Billy Hamilton on that ball. Billy gets his second hit of the game. A pure speed hit right there. Why this is what you want to see out of Billy Hamilton. I yeah, I really don't know why your third baseman's playing that deep anyway with Hamilton up there. Are you just asking for the slow bouncer to happen? I'd love to know, you know, when Billy really puts out going down the line, what that number is as far as how long it takes him from the time that he makes contact with the bat until he makes contact with the bag. That's what the scouts are always looking at. They've always have their scout watches out. Every batter gets timed. But Hamilton's has to be some kind of special, especially when you start comparing him around the team and then around the league. Obviously be a little quicker from the left side. Lozada single and a home run tonight. New career high set for him with his 16th home run.
in the air by Kozart shallow center. Michael Bourne will make the play to retire the side. Reds had another run. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Anthony DeSclafani looking for his first ever complete game shutout. He takes the mound in the ninth. Moment of the night brought to you by Miller Lite. How about Scott Schebler? That's that blast he hit in the first inning, a three run homer. His fifth of the year and made it 4 0. And then again, Scott Schebler. This one came in the second with two runners aboard. First multi home run game of his career. Career high five runs batted in for Schebler, a Miller time moment of the night. Now we have another opportunity for a Miller time moment. That out of Right hander Anthony D. Sclafani looking for his first big league complete game shutout. Brandon Drury to right, and D. Sclafani is a third of the way home as he gets Drury on that fly ball into right field. That's 10 of the last 11 now retired by D. Sclafani. He's been fairly pitch efficient tonight. He's only had one inning, the fifth, which he threw more than 16 pitches. He gets a comebacker here, and so quickly two out in the ninth. He gets two outs on three pitches. And he'll deal with Ricky Weeks as the last man, hopefully, to face Anthony D. Sclafani. Have that complete game this year out of Brandon Finnegan. It came against the Dodgers on the 23rd of May out in LA. It was a 1 0 loss. The last time the Reds have had a complete game shutout win was last July the 7th in Washington in a 5 0 win over the Nationals, authored by Johnny Cueto. Ricky Weeks, he had a big night here last night. Started out in left field, triple, a home run, two out of three. Home run was his 21st against Reds pitching in his career. Loses the bat, missed the ball. Is it a ball and a strike? That one flying down there. The bat boy brought him on a different bat. He said, No, no. I want the bat I had. For a long time Milwaukee Brewer. Heck of a right side of the infield back there for a few years. They had in Milwaukee with Weeks at second, Prince Fielder at first. Ah, 
Now Di Sclafani a strike away from a complete game shutout. Here at Arizona tonight. And he gets it with a strikeout. His eighth of the game, and Anthony D. Sclafani tops off a big night for the Reds, both offensively and from a pitching standpoint. First career complete game shutout for the right hander out of Freehold, New Jersey, coupled with the fact that the Reds pound out 16 hits. 13 runs, five home runs. What a complete effort here tonight. It really was. And I'll tell you the guy, other than Anthony Di Scafani, who's got to be as excited as Di Scafani himself, is the guy that caught every one of those catch uh, pitches. He's right here on our screen at the very end. Ramon Cabrera. He had never caught Di Scafani before in a game since a starter before tonight so there's always a little certain amount of mystery going on but there was no mystery between Di Scafani and Cabrera Ramon Cabrera did a great job Di Scafani was impeccable a dominant really and uh, looks like we're going to have a hear from him as he's going to do an interview very quickly with Jim Day 13 nothing the score the Reds win it so this series is even at one game apiece the rubber game coming up here tomorrow afternoon stay with us now Reds live post game presented by Performance Kings Honda next.